vacuum fluorescent displays, cathode ray tubes, fluorescent tubes, and white LEDs. These are all an example application of phosphors. A phosphor is a material that emits light when excited. In VFDs and CRTs, the phosphor is excited using an electron beam, while fluorescent tubes and white LEDs use shorter wavelength light. In this video, I'll show the basics of how to produce a phosphor in an amateur setting. Most, perhaps all, phosphors are crystalline materials doped with impurities, so to make them, you need a way to introduce a small amount of a dopant material in the crystal structure of a host material. One of the simplest materials to work with is zinc sulfide, which can be doped to give a range of colors depending on the impurity. Copper makes green, manganese makes orange, while silver makes blue. Probably, if you mix them, you may get a whitish color, but I haven't yet tried. Anyway, today we are going to make the green color. To start, you need to make a slurry with half a gram of zinc sulfide and 5 milliliters of distilled water. Purity is key, as even a few parts per million of elements such as iron would destroy the glow. To this, add 0.5 milliliters of a 3 millimolar solution of copper sulfate. Copper sulfate actually is supposed to be blue, but this is a very dilute solution. This will be our dopant. After adding it, stir the beaker a little until the color is uniform. Note that, if your copper sulfate was not very pure, you should recrystallize it at least once. Then, add 1 ml of a 0.25 molar ammonium chloride solution. This will serve as a flux. You can make ammonium chloride from a household ammonia and hydrochloric acid, but you have to purify it by recrystallization. After adding everything and stirring, put the beaker on a hot plate at low heat until all the water has evaporated. While the water evaporates, let's talk a bit about the next step. We need to fire the dry powder that we are making in a tube furnace at over 1000 degrees under inert atmosphere. While this may seem impossible to do in an amateur setting, it is actually pretty easy and cheap too. For this, you need fire bricks, a quartz tube, and a map gas torch. Fire bricks will be the heat insulation of our furnace. They are a form of concrete uh, with air trapped inside. They are very lightweight and easily cut to shape with just a spatula and a hammer. The quartz tube can be cheaply bought on eBay and prevents unknown impurities from the fire breaks from ending up in the phosphor. Now, let's make our furnace. See, I told you it was easy. By the magic of video editing, the furnace is ready and the phosphor has been dried and loaded in the center of the tube. Now, we need to flush the tube with an inert gas. I'm using argon because it is easy to find as a TIG and MIG welder supplies and because it is denser than air. The plastic tubes at the side of the quartz tube are enough to keep the argon inside the furnace. Do not cap the end of the tubes as the gas will expand during firing. I'm using water to gauge the flow of the argon. Firing is done with the map gas torch and lasts around 10 minutes. The material shall glow yellow during the firing. 
After firing, let the phosphor cool and wash it with water to remove flux residues. This is the result. I'm shining UV light to the phosphor and it emits a bright green glow. In the next video, we'll see how to use it to make a display.